care. Kind of. I think Unless they take their legs that, off and sell them, but right. maybe you could just not step in them. So that they would get the same subsidies. I think that is a, it raises so you many issues. You want to open Obamacare to undocumented to immigrants. To so, in other words, can anybody in the world that wishes come here to America and live off of the socialist entitlement state. And where does this all end? How do we afford this? Well, of course we don't. They're gonna to have to take everything from those of us who are here in America. They're going to level us all to a third world poverty level. And that's the way you do that. And that's what this is designed for. The open borders, the trans-Pacific transatlantic partnerships, all of that is about destroying Western economies leveling everybody to a third world level so that the elite can then have through their concentration of wealth. This is all about increasing the uh, 1%. They were, the, they were complaining about at the very beginning. Right. The 1% of the 1% of the 1%. Right, those are her everyone. biggest donors. Yes. Not going to yes. knock them down. After watching this debate, I identify as angry. <laughs> well, you know, quite frankly, I, I don't understand how working Americans can accept the fact that they're going to have these people open the borders and give away their jobs, give away their income, give away their accumulated wealth because they're going to open up this vast, they want a larger entitlement state and they want to make it available to anyone who wishes to come here without any control or leveling whatsoever. I mean, it, it, no way to control any of this. It's a Cloward and Piven, they strategize about this. This is what the socialist economists wanted to do. We've talked about this many times and that's what these people are doing system in place. No country has is a country without defining its borders. We need to resolve this issue. I, I actually introduced an amendment in the 07 Thank immigration you, bill uh, giving a pathway to citizenship to those people who had come here and put down their roots and met a, a, a series of, of you, standards. Senator. We lost, I, I, I but I, I introduced that in 07. So I, we need a comprehensive reform and we need to be able to define our borders. Secretary and Clinton. I, I, I want to follow up because I think underneath Juan Carlos's important questions, there is such a difference between everything you're hearing here on this stage and what we hear from the Republicans here, here. who have demonized hardworking immigrants who have here. insulted them. You know, uh, I came to Las Vegas. How and dare they May, ask how we're going to pay for this? Met with a group of dreamers. Yeah. I wish everybody in America could dreamers. meet with these young people to hear their stories. Oh, there was a girl in uh, California who met with a dreamer, right? Didn't didn't she get killed? Yeah. From a gun from an That's ATF agent? Dreaming. Well, <laughs> you, you, as, as Alex has pointed out many times, you cannot go to the countries that these people are coming from and just throw yourself on the on the mercies of the welfare state or make demands on the welfare state. Virtually every country, even countries like Belize, you have to demonstrate that you have the means to support yourself. Many countries don't allow you to participate in the entitlement program until you've been there a very long time. Why should we be different? Why should we allow anyone who wishes to come here to bring themselves in, essentially move into our house and demand that we feed and clothe them and educate them in the language that they choose? And we just are not going to be able to do that. They're going to wind up First of all, taking our homes, because that's how we pay for uh, schools is through property taxes. No one's going to be able to afford the property taxes to educate all the children of the world that their parents wish to send here to be educated in the language of their choice, not even in English. They do not wish to be a part of this culture. They do not share our our values of individual liberty or or anything else. We, David, right now you're not sounding PC. No. When you go to Switzerland, you have to get people to recommend you have to live there for a number of years, you have to be able to support yourself, you have to have Swiss citizens say, yes, he, he agrees with the values that we, the Swiss people, hold uh, as, as important. That's a prerequisite. Let's go to Kit. Kit, do you have anything on Twitter? Yes, I got a tweet a user sent to Donald Trump. It says, this is one of the most dysfunctional debates I've seen in my lifetime. Now, it's a really in insightful tweet because this whole debate shows us that Hillary Clinton was always the shoe-in candidate. I mean, the DNC yeah. even waited until October to even have a debate, and that's extremely unprecedented for a presidential election. And, you know, they ex it's obvious that they expected Hillary to be the candidate, but because of the email gate and all the stuff going on with all her baggage that's come to light, that she's no longer, that's no longer, longer the case. You know, she's no longer the shoe-in candidate. So that's part of the reason why this whole debate just feels this real dysfunction about it, because it wasn't really meant to be a debate at all. It's just It was meant to be a, a way to uh, show the gloss and polish Hillary for the upcoming head-on with a Republican candidate. But you know, we've already seen the cracks with Hillary. I mean, Hillary's like a rusted-out car you see at a car show that someone <laughs> put a 
you know, put a new fresh coat of paint on, but you see the rust bubbling through. Yeah, yeah you know, I, I think, uh, too, when we look at uh, Joe Biden, who is waiting this out and, and, and waiting to come in, I, I do believe that there's something of a split in the Democrat establishment. Certainly, we have the people like uh, Debbie Wasserman Schultz, who is on uh, Hillary Clinton's side that runs the DNC. But uh, there's a lot of people who don't like Hillary Clinton because she's got some pretty sharp elbows. And I think uh, uh, they're waiting to see uh, what's going to happen with uh, Joe Biden. But, you know, clearly this is not much of a debate. This is more of a uh, Hillary Clinton love fest, as you pointed out. Well, here they're talking about the NSA surveillance and... Reforming Section 215 of the Patriot Secretary Act. Secretary Clinton, do you regret Let's... your vote on the Patriot Act? No, mm -hmm. I don't. I think oh, um, that it, uh, it was Act, necessary yeah. to make sure that we were able, after 9-11, to put in place the security that we needed. And <laughs> it is true that it did require that there be a process. What happened, however, is that the Bush administration began to chip away at that process and I began to speak out about But you can trust me to do everything Obama above took the took a board. hammer to yeah. it yeah. and the other behavior that they engage in we always have to keep the balance Do you think she'll criticize liberty, Obama for doing uh, three times the number of people journalists and whistleblowers on the 1917 Sanders, Espionage Sanders, Act that all the previous presidents combined went after No Point. Let me ask you, if elected, would you shut down the NSA surveillance program? So, I'm sorry? Would you shut down the NSA surveillance Absolutely, program? Absolutely, of course. You would? Good. Point blank. Good. Well, I would shut down, make, I'd shut down what exists right now, is that virtually every telephone call in this country ends up in a file at the NSA. That is unacceptable to me. But it's not just Good. government surveillance. I think the government is involved in our emails, is involved in our websites, Corporate America is doing it as well. If we are a free country, we have the right to be free. Yes, we have to defend ourselves. But not the right to our own without money. Do that without <laughs> impinging on our constitutional rights and our privacy Anderson, rights. Anderson, the NSA the governor is actually... You know, he complains about corporate espionage and corporate surveillance, but that's a part of the government surveillance because they use the information sharing. They maintain that if the corporation collects that information on you, if Google and Facebook collect that information, they can then share it with the government because they maintain that Google owns that information about you. You don't own your own information. They own it. And that's what CISPA is about. They ought to ask them a question about whether they support CISPA or CISPA. Could have gotten all of the protections of being a whistleblower. He could have raised. Oh, all he could have. Right. He has oh. raised. Obama's so and respectful about. Yeah, we see what happens to whistleblowers under your administration. Should he do in jail addition, time? In addition, he stole. Oh, very there would have been a positive response to Snowden. That hmm. has unfortunately uh, fallen into a lot of the wrong hands. Governor so, O'Malley, no. no. we saw send emails. Yeah. Right. Important class. That's yeah. what she's talking about. That information has fallen into the wrong hands. Snowden saw how they treated the NSA whistleblowers who went through proper channels. He saw that they criminally charged uh, Drake on that, and that's why he said he fled because right. he knows that they come after the whistleblower, not the person who breaks the law. Um, Snowden played a very important role in educating the American people. Uh, to the degree in which our civil liberties and our constitutional rights are being undermined. Is he a hero? He did, he did break the law, and I think there should be a penalty to that. But I think what he did in educating us should be taken into consideration before he is Senator Webb? What about the people of the NSA that broke the law? What about the people of the NSA that violated their oath to the Constitution? Should there be any penalty for them? Yeah, for Hillary Clinton. We have a serious problem in terms of the collection of personal information in this country. And one of the things that I did during the FISA bill in 2007, the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act, was introduced. He should be against all this because that's how they kind of ended up finding out that she was sending that stuff anyways. Of how right. Yeah. To collect this broad information in the internet age. But after a certain period of time, you need to destroy the personal information that you have. Oh, she's nodding yes. Is not she going to uh, uh, shut down the NSA collection center where they store all this stuff out in Bluffdale, Utah? Yeah, yeah Snapchat's going to take <laughs> over. Of information that is ripe for people with bad intentions. Well, that's how they're going to fight ICE. Another, yeah, with well, Snapchat, too. For each of you, Pretty much Snapchat's going to take over everything. Thing, <laughs> the one way that your administration would not be a third term of President Obama. Certainly ending the wars. Uh, We've got to stop these wars. We have, a, we have to have a new dynamic, a new paradigm. Uh, we just spent half a billion dollars arming and training soldiers, the, the rebel soldiers in Syria. They quickly joined the other side. President Obama's we generals right now the, are suggesting keeping troops in Afghanistan a, after the time he wanted them pulled out. Would oh, you don't talk about how the question, rebels my, my defected ISIS. Uh, 
And also, we just bombed a hospital. Hey, We've good. Uh, had good. drone strikes that, that uh, hit civilian weddings. Hey, guys, we got exclusive footage of uh, a pre-party that was going on right before they went on for the debate. So we're just going to roll a little bit of that while they're talking. Okay, you got a pre-party. Here we go. Pre-party footage. To protect the Main Street economy from recklessness. <laughs> 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 That, unfortunately, is the Constitution. They're getting ready to pick it dry. Oh. Uh, ooh, the power. <laughs> the dark crystal taught me everything I needed to know about how the world operates. That was when I woke up. Is there a policy difference? So... Well, that, a that's that the I most amazing thing right there. How would your presidency be different? Well, I'm a woman and he's black. <laughs> there you go. That's the difference between me and Obama. Yeah, there we go. And here's how Here's oh, how it's different. Okay, Look, we got a still shot she of did. Hillary just she now. She said, I'm a woman and I'm different. black. No, she didn't say he's oh. black. She says, I'm a woman. You know, but it's all about identity oh, David, politics. Please. That's her qualification for being president. It's her, her turn. She's a Clinton. She's a woman. So we should yeah. vote for her. That's, that's why she's entitled to be president. Yeah. Well, she said she didn't want her being, you know, that to be the reason why people vote for her. <laughs> Just one of the reasons why she stands out. She's a woman. We want to vote for her because she's honest. Yeah. She's hardworking, and she's just like you and me. You know what it's, she knows exactly what it's like to be an American and to put my own shoes on and drive a car and to go do things. Uh, she hasn't driven a car in, like, 20-something years. Yeah. So. <laughs> a handful of billionaires. Senator Webb, how would you not be a third term for Obama? I got a great deal of admiration and affection for Senator Sanders, but I, I, Bernie, I don't think the revolution's going to come, and I don't think the Congress is going to pay for a lot of this stuff. And if there would be a major difference between <laughs> my administration and the Obama administration, it would be in the use of executive authority. I came up as a committee counsel in the Congress, used to put dozens of bills through the House floor every year as a committee counsel in the Veterans Committee. I have a a very strong feeling about how our federal system works and how we need to lead and energize the congressional process instead of allowing these divisions to continue to paralyze what we're doing. So I would lead working with both parties in the Congress and working through them in the traditional way that our Constitution Senator Sanders, done. he cited you. You don't hear a lot of Democratic presidential candidates talking about revolution. What do you mean? What I mean is that we need to have one of the larger voter turnouts in the world, not one of the lowest. We need to raise public consciousness. We need the American people to know what's going on in Washington in a way that today they do not know. And when people come together... By design, because they watch CNN. Exists now ...and are prepared to take on the big money interest... Then we can I think there's some kind of like underlying hypnotism energy going on. He keeps moving his hands and I keep like wanting to fall asleep. <laughs> well, they've, they've completely managed to avoid the one issue that I had hoped that they might talk about, and that is the, the Trans-Pacific Partnership as so-called partnership. This secret corporate trade agreement, these people pontificate about Wall Street and big capitalism, and yet they give this a pass and they don't even talk about it. As you point out, he, he threw out all the different uh, positions that Hillary had flip flopped Unfortunately, on David, we are beginning. out of time now. Yep, we don't have any time. time to talk about these issues. Go ahead. Well, we'll continue to talk about those issues. Uh, are we gonna Are we gonna wrap it up at they're this point? They're gonna talk about. No, they're no, they're no, gonna no. talk about oh, how the yeah. candidates. We're going until ten o'clock. Okay, marijuana. we're going till ten. So we're gonna still be here for a while, but we're gonna take a quick break as CNN takes a quick break, and we're gonna be right back. So stay with us. We're going to uh, take a short break. We'll be back in a moment. I might as well just...
disapproval for Hillary Clinton. 